We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. So what I'd like to talk about today is a skill I believe is kind of the, the skill that's most missing in the industry. Um, and it's the difference between mediocre kind of okay compers that can get a shot done and senior wanted compers who are in demand who can look develop a shot or a sequence and lead the direction of that look. I've been teaching it for uh, compositing for around nine years now. Um, and if I'm honest with you, you kind of get this these students who pick up the technical skills very, very quickly um, and they know where the buttons are. But then they kind of have this existential crisis where they've kind of they, they've learned where the buttons are, but they don't know how to look an image. Right. And they're like, wow, now I've got to learn about this side of of this art that I'm I'm kind of getting involved in. So what I want to do today is actually cover that skill of how to make your images look better and improve the look of them in order to tell the story um, better as well. And it's a thing called balance that we're going to talk about today. Um, I found that uh, you're kind of talking about balance more at high-end companies or in higher-end projects. I think simply because you've got more time to actually design the look. But you can still use everything I talk about today on any production that you're on. Uh, so, so what actually is balance then? Well, balance is actually the art of designing the image to get the audience to look where you want them to look in order to tell your story. So, for instance, in this case, we're kind of looking at this image. Um, I'll, I'll talk more about this in a second, but we're looking at this image where we've got the Eiffel Tower kind of dead middle. And it's pretty obvious that that is where the, uh, the, the director and, and the people that designed this shot want us to look. Well, it wouldn't make sense for there to be kind of like a big like spaceship up here or something way more exciting up here in the corner, right? Because we're going to instantly look there instead of the middle. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how to kind of like create the balance and get the audience to look where you actually want them to look. So let's start then. So I've got this shot from Hugo here, which I think demonstrates this pretty well. Um, and what we're going to do, by the way, we're going to look at two shots that I think do this very well. And then we're going to look at one shot that I think doesn't do this so well. And I'm probably going to keep quiet about what company did it and the, <laughs> and the project as well. Um, but we'll start off with this one. It just heads up. This is a visual effect breakdown. So at one point there are going to be kind of green screen people flying around, but it's no problem at all. We can still get our point across. So I'm going to play through the shot and we'll We'll uh, come back to it and see how they kind of designed this. Now, actually, one thing I'd like you to do while I play this through is ask yourself at various points while you're watching this shot, where are you looking in the image and how have they got you to look there? So, for instance, at this point, right, we're looking at the Eiffel Tower. How have they actually got us to, to look here? I'm going to play the shot through and we'll come back. So you can see we're in Paris. It's, it, it's snowing. And we kind of got this train station in the middle. And the camera's going to fly through into the middle bit. Again, always ask, keep asking yourself where you're, where you're looking. And then we're just going through now. And eventually at the very end of this, there's kind of a big smoke plume. And then we kind of go into the, the shot where they, they've transitioned into the live action. So that all seems so easy, right? So if you looked at a script, it would be, oh, a camera starts off pointing at the other tower and then flies through a train station. But I'm going to show you uh, why if you actually just did this for real or did it without thinking about various um, aspects of where you want the audience to look, this would have become a very different shot entirely. So let's start off then. As I kind of talked about at the start before I played this, we're looking at the Eiffel Tower right now. How have they got us to look there though? Well, first of all, they've conveniently put these bright clouds behind it. And what that's doing is it's popping out the Eiffel Tower, right? We've got these dark clouds up here um, and we've got bright ones below. Why didn't they have dark clouds down here? Well, the Eiffel Tower would have got completely lost in those dark clouds and we wouldn't have had the silhouette pop out. So they're using contrast, high contrast in this case, because the Eiffel Tower is a lot darker than the bright clouds behind so it really pops out in order to get our eye to look there. They're also using a bit of saturation because you can see we've got this orange rim light just down the side here. And that's not really on any other sh um, any other buildings actually in the shot. So they're very cleverly using kind of this as your... Like, and it's not highly saturated, but more saturated than any other part of the image in order to get your eye there as well. Something else they've done, because obviously it's winter time, they wanted us to know that straight from the start. We're in Paris and it's winter. How have they done that? Well, again, let's have a look at the clouds. What they've done is they've got these very dark, kind of undetailed clouds at the top, and they've got these very bright detailed clouds at the bottom. Again, these clouds look way more interesting than these ones. But the reason why I think that they've made them dark is to make the snow pop out. 
If you have snow over light clouds like down here, the snow just doesn't pop out. And we need to very quickly show the audience, look, you're in Paris and it's winter, right? Again, they're trying to kind of idiot proof the image and not idiot proof in regards to they don't trust the audience to work this stuff out by themselves. But there's such a little time when certain shots are on. I mean, I've worked on shots that are 12 or 24 frames and it's like, right, okay, we want people to look here. So how can we get them to look there very quickly? And all of this is all coming down to how you're designing this image. So they've used these dark clouds at the top to make the snow pop, kept them very flat so they're a bit boring in order to draw our eye below. Let's keep going through. Another thing, by the way, as well, this is very obvious, but the snow's obviously falling towards that point and actually the Eiffel Tower, which draws attention to it. As we go through now, you can see, where's our eye? Well, our eye's probably going towards this point now. Again, it's center of frame that helps, right? But they've kind of, in, they've worked on top of that. So yes, it's center of frame, but what else have they done in order to get our eye to look where they want it to look? Well, they've used smoke quite cleverly, kind of thin, wispier smoke here to just cover up certain aspects of, of this background. So it just kind of washes everything out, therefore becoming quite uncontrasty. It's kind of quite low detail and unexciting compared to the middle. We've got movement here as well, which is gonna help. Another thing as well, look at the snow. Look at the snow on these rooftops compared to these ones. It's almost like a whole different material. It, it's, it's just way brighter to begin with. So again, they're using contrast in order to get our ride to look actually to where they want it to, to go. And definitely the movement's gonna help as well. Now, I really love a frame like this because it's so clever how they've done done this. So again, it's, it's middle of frame where they want us to look. I mean, yes, the camera's gonna, gonna move there, which definitely helps, but look at how much detail we can actually see in here compared to the uh, two surrounding arches. We can barely see any detail in this arch and this arch. And that's simply because what they've done is they've added the smoke behind and got these bright tops of the carriage. Look at the top of that carriage compared to that one. You could argue that, look, these should be exactly the same. But by keeping this fairly dark, it, it just isn't drawing our eye. Look, we can barely see the little lines here that are actually on the on the arch. Whereas this one, look, all these nice details pop out. We can see this cross section here, which we just can't see between on this one and this one. Have a look at the black levels as well, by the way. There's definitely a brighter highlight here, right? And it's slightly darker on these beams. So again, look at this, like a frame like this is perfect, right? Look, we can really see that light just pops out. We've got the same lights here, but they're just not popping out because they get lost completely in the dark background. They could have quite easily had this train over here kick out the same amount of smoke as this one, but our eye just, they don't want us to look there. Okay, let's try and make it feel very kind of boring. Again, it's still gonna feel realistic, but they don't want to make it very interesting or high detailed. So you can see, look at the amount of detail we can see here. All these really nice light details just gets completely lost over here. So I'm just gonna let it go for this. Now, an interesting thing about this, I'm gonna give you just like, this isn't a spoiler. Um, it's something to do with clocks, this film. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and at the very end of this, you've got a clock. This little round semicircle here isn't one of these lights coming from the roof. No, it's actually a clock at the end of this uh, train platform. So what have they done? Well, look at all the perspective lines lead there. They've very cleverly done that. The lights lead down and, and go there. The god rays are pointing there as well, which is convenient. They've also kept this top of the station very, very smoky and diffuse. And what that then means is they can diffuse the light, which therefore means it's darker up there. Look at the, look at the lights, by the way on the suitcase and this guy's hat and the other talent that they've added compared to the light up here. It's way brighter because they're trying to keep your eye down in this image and keep the balance of it so that you're not looking up in the top half, you're keeping down into the in the bottom half. So again, look, all the God rays. Now, something else I want you to do is keep an eye on that clock. It never gets covered with smoke. In fact, this bit, I think there's a smoke that goes, yeah, this bit of smoke actually breaks around it, right? And it's only until they need to do that kind of convenient crossover into the real plate that you get this smoke. So if I were to tell you, hey, look, what we're going to do is we're going to just run a camera down a train platform uh, at the end because that's where the clock is. You could have been looking all over the place. There might have been a, a guy or a girl over here, let's say a girl in like a red dress that's running towards the side of the frame. Well, now your eyes going to be distracted there. But you can see, look, everyone's wearing very low, kind of saturated clothing, which definitely helps. Everything's quite low saturation in general, and nothing breaks in front of that clock. Everything's pointing towards it. So as you can see, what seems like a shot where on a bit of paper, it would just say, starts pointing at the Eiffel Tower, and then moves for a train station. You can see there's been a whole, whole lot of thought about 
about the actual image and where they want to look at every single point of this shot. And this is something you should be thinking about as a compositor. I mean, all departments should be thinking about this, but you as a compositor should be thinking about it because it will make the difference between where am I going to put that smoke stop footage? Do I have it going this way or this way? Where do I put my god rays? What way does the sun go? How kind of contrasty should it be at the top vis the bottom? All of these decisions are decisions that can be made in compositing. So it's super, super important that you're starting to think about balance. This will make you a better compositor and it will also mean that you're kind of indispensable a little bit because you're not just a compositor now, you can actually develop the look of sequences. Super, super important. Now, next up, I want to show you a shot that was worked on by a compositor called Miguel Santander Silva. Um, I consider him to kind of have one of the best eyes in the in the visual effects industry, personally. Um, he's a compositor at ILM. They seem to agree as well because <laughs> they held on to him for quite a while. Um, and this is a shot from Jurassic World 2, um, and obviously there was an effects team and, and, and modelers, etc., and lighters, texturers working on this. But I know that he had to do a, a bit of kind of working, comp comping to kind of like help sell the shot. So I just thought we should just go through kind of using what we've learned from that Hugo shot and what I've talked about in that shot. And look at how Miguel's using that in, in this shot as well, how the visual effects artist is using it in this one as well. So first up, let's just have a quick look from the shot. Again, this is from Jurassic World 2. It's quite an iconic shot from that film. Dinosaur kind of rears up and then it gets engulfed in the flames. So what are they doing and how are they getting, again, how are the visual effects artists and Miguel, how is he in his comp making it so that we look where um, the, they want us to look? Well, if we have a look, let's start from the start. And what I want you to do is keep an eye on the smoke down the bottom. So keep an eye on this bit of smoke in the foreground and this bit of smoke here. Notice how this bit of smoke goes this way and this bit of smoke goes this way. Again, they're making it pretty idiot proof, right? Like if you watch through, look, this one's pointing this way. This one's kind of coming up and pointing this way. And you can see it flies over even more. Then here's a big bit as well flying over. So again, what Miguel's doing, or I'd imagine this is Miguel adding this and adding the smoke in, um, he's covering up these areas. He doesn't want us to look here and he's pointing our eye towards the middle by moving that smoke there. Something else he's doing as well, a little like that Hugo shot, look at the god rays. They're pointing directly again at the exactly where he wants us to look in the shot. Something else as well, he's using high contrast, so you can see this is quite, he's using colour as well. There's very little colour in the rest of the image, um, probably by, by design. Um, and he's adding that into the middle bit here in order to draw our eye. And notice the contrast levels, how bright this is, how bright this is compared to the actual dinosaur. We've obviously got kind of quite high contrast here and here, but because it's saturated, basically it's got a lot of strong colour, it's really catching our eye and drawing our eye there. So you can see it's super clever, right? And it's using very similar techniques to what we saw on that Hugo, um, on that Hugo shot. And notice as well, look, he doesn't really want you to look up here in these corner bits. So he's kind of keeping the, the clouds fairly dark and uninteresting um, in order to keep our eye in the middle of the frame. He's blown out the top bit and blown out kind of the bottom bit. Again, this would be f like photographically correct as well, but he's done it in order to draw our eye to the middle of the shot. So I just thought that's another really useful shot to look at because again, it, it Feel if on paper you wrote, well, look, a dinosaur kind of rears up, gets engulfed in flames and there's smoke everywhere. That could look a whole lot different to what we're looking at now. So he's using the same techniques that we looked at Hugo in order to draw our eye to a different part of the image. Again, you can keep using these in your shots as well as you work on them. So now I want to show you a shot that I feel isn't so good. Now, I'm not going to tell you what, what, uh, who worked on it and what company worked on it, etc. Um, I don't know what artists worked on it, but I do know the company in the show, but I'm not going to mention that. Because again, I know that company does kick out good stuff and you don't know the situation they're in when making this shot. Maybe the client was a pain in the ass. Maybe the client wanted it to look like this. But this for me is a great example of a shot that doesn't work so well. And the reason why is where's the focal point? Well, if we were going on the ideas we kind of have learned about so far, then maybe this Coca-Cola sign is the focal point, right? Because it's kind of the highest saturated, highest contrast area. And that's definitely what draws my eye. But that doesn't make any sense for this to be the focal point, right? Like, actually, it should probably be the kind of middle of shot here. Or maybe this particular shot is about this hotel and they should have made these signs kind of flash or something and had some color here or, or something just draw our eye. But can you see how there's nothing really that really pings out and draws our eye? 
there's they're not using the smoke to kind of cover areas like this for instance is a is quite a saturated bright area and it's high contrast compared to here so i would have kind of like covered this in just thin wispy smoke just to knock it back a little bit in order to sit the shot back just a touch another thing to check as well is just i mean general tech checky stuff like white levels here compared to here and here and then look at the window brightness etc it's not super consistent if you look at the brightness up here compared to these windows these are a bit blue these are white for some reason um, look at the american flag can you see look there's no saturation there and again that might be a decision in order to draw your eye somewhere but it's not it's not working in this shot look at how like desaturated this is compared to the coca-cola sign again so it just feels a little bit all over the place right like there's nowhere for our eye to really um kind of focus on Again, if you wanted the middle of shot here, make that Macy sign super saturated, maybe a super saturated green. Have the star flash a little bit. Have lots of high moving cars down here or something in order to just get our eye looking there. Have lots of stuff going there and making it the most interesting part of the shot. And again, the problem is there's no really super interesting part of the shot here. So it's very hard for us to know where it is. And it's just kind of, the shot just becomes a bit of a nil shot and like it doesn't really do anything. So this is a great example, and hopefully you can feel this as well, of kind of how to uh, not design a shot. And well, there's basically no focal point and it hasn't been designed in the first place. So it's always worth having a look at this. Whenever there's a shot you don't particularly like and you don't think is that successful, ask yourself why. Sometimes it might be techie things, like the white levels I was pointing out that aren't super consistent around the shot. But also in general, work out where, the shot, where they want you to look. Like if you want me to look here, how again? Do you get me to look here? Do you use high saturation? Do you use flashing lights, etc.? And this shot just fails on that front because the Coca-Cola sign is kind of the most highly saturated, interesting area, and that's probably not where they want us to look.